Hello, Anna here. We're going to continue working on our histology. We're now on part seven where we're going to focus in on cartilage and then just do a brief nod to bone, bone and blood. All right, let's think about our collagen, excuse me, our cartilage. So cartilage is a type of connective tissue, which means it's got cells and it's got extracellular matrix. So remember the ground substance and the fibers are the extracellular matrix. With our connective tissues, it's the change in ground substance and the quantities and types of fibers that determines the function of the tissue. So with cartilage, we move to a gel-like consistency, which is gonna let you resist tension. So I want you to imagine a cup, all right? And in that cup, there's liquid. And if you step on it, that liquid is just gonna splash and go everywhere. But let's say we've got a cup and instead of a liquid, we have solidified jello. Now when you step on it, the cup might crush, but the jello is gonna probably spring back depending on how much force you do in your step. Um, but basically it resists the compression. Now the cartilages have the three types of fibers. The collagen fiber is gonna give the other component to the function, which is resisting compression. So the generic function of cartilage is resist tension and compression, okay? That's their basic job. Now, with our connective tissue propers, the primary cell that we were talking about was fibroblasts and then the occasional um, lymphocyte or macrophage or something like that. Cartilage is different in that chondrocytes are the dominant functional cell. And their job is to maintain the gel around it, okay, among some other jobs, okay? Now, chondrocytes are made from chondroblasts. So chondroblasts make the extracellular matrix, and as they are making it, they will eventually come to a wall of gel made from another chondroblast. When that happens, they get stuck, and they can't go anywhere. So this is the wall that they've hit, okay? So now we're gonna change that chondroblast into a chondrocyte. And it's gonna have gel extracellular matrix all around it. So this cell is now the chondrocyte that lives inside the lacuna, okay? Um, now, remember that cartilage is avascular and it also has no nerves. So when you feel pain and torn cartilage, it's actually the tissue around it. Now cartilage has three major types. I've got hyaline. I've got fibrocartilage, and I have elastic cartilage. And again, it's important to put the second part of the name to put cartilage so that you do not confuse it with elastic connective tissue proper. Now, functionally, I need you to know functionally how each of these is different. Okay, hyaline cartilage is the classic structure dominated by a moderate amount of fibers and, a, and the gelatin, okay? So its function is to resist tension and compression, okay? The tension is from the moderate number of collagen fibers and the compression is from the gel. All right, fibrocartilage has a much higher quantity of collagen. 
Therefore, it can resist extreme tension and compression. When you are doing a test and it asks about function for fibrocartilage, you must include that word with the function because otherwise I can't tell that you can tell the difference between fibrocartilage and hyaline cartilage. All right, elastic cartilage has a higher quantity of elastic fibers. All right, so it is going to resist some tension and compression for sure, but its main job, the thing I want you to put on tests, is it recoils. That's what you need to remember about that, okay? Now in the next couple of slides, we're gonna look at some pictures. All right, here we are looking at classic hyaline cartilage, okay? What do you want to do when you look at a photomicrograph like this? The first thing you want to do, the first thing you should see is the ground substance. All right, the second thing you should be noticing are the lacunae, okay? So here are my tricks. The lacunae to me look like fish eyes. So when I look at this, I see eyeballs, lots and lots of eyeballs. So that would be the chondrocyte and that would be the lacuna. I see lots and lots of these, okay? In between them, I see the gel. And this gel is the ground substance. It is smooth and glassy. So smooth and glassy. So I see a smooth surface between the fish eyes. This stain is pink. There is another stain that we use with cartilage and it can be a bluish color. Okay, so don't get stuck on the color. Get stuck on the smooth glassiness. Okay, so again, resist tension and compression. That's what you should memorize as the function. Okay, where do you find it? The articular cartilage of joints the fetal skeleton, epiphyseal place. Costal means ribs, so the parts that attach the rib bones to the sternum, those are the costal ends. Okay, let's look at the next picture. All right, I've thrown this one in to show you how it, things can look a little different. All right, so over here, I see I have a free edge and a free edge. So that means that is epithelium, okay? And I actually think the epithelium has been ripped off of this area because this just looks like dense regular CT to me. And this looks like part of a blood vessel, so we're not even gonna worry about that. All right, so the first thing I notice are my fish eyes. So that's it, first thing, fish eyes. That tells me it's cartilage and not some other type of connective tissue. The next thing I notice is if I look at the ground substance, it is smooth, so the ground substance is smooth and glassy, okay? Now down here on this slide, this epithelium is PCCE, pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium. This is from um, the trachea. I can see some goblet cells right here, okay? Now down here, I see the classic manifestation of the fish eyes. So those are my chondrocytes within the lacunae. And then in the middle, I see an orangey stain that is smooth and glassy. So that is my ground substance. Okay, next slide. All right, here we are looking at elastic cartilage and Remember, the function is recoil. Yeah, it can absorb, it can resist tension, resist compression, but what you need to remember is recoil. 
We have two examples of it in the human body, the external ear and the epiglottis, okay? So what makes it different from hyaline? That's the critical thing. This is what you have to be able to explain. What makes it different is the high number of elastic fibers. Because of this, they use two stains, and what you will see is in between, so right here, I've got my lacuni, and I'm gonna do those in blue. All right, I got lots and lots of lacuni, okay? And the chondrocytes are within the lacuni. Then in green, I'm gonna show you these black lines that are going between the lacuni. So this does not look smooth, okay? I see short, sharp, darker staining lines between the lacuni, okay? That is the telltale sign for elastic cartilage. You find the lacuni, the fish eyes, and then you see that there are all these lines in between them. Those are the elastic fibers. Okay, next slide. Here is a slide of elastic cartilage done at 1,000 total mag. So I can see very clearly my chondrocyte, and then this is my lacuna. Okay, and then I can see more here and here and here and here. Okay, now the ground substance is in between the two of them, and what I see are all these short, sharp, black staining lines, and those are the elastic fibers. Okay, so definitely not smooth and glossy. Next slide. All right, now I've got a picture and this is from the epiglottis and um, so there the epiglottis this is a picture that I have taken from a microscope in our a p one lab and I can see stratified squamous epithelium how do I know it's epithelium free edge all right down here this is my lamina propria so that's a realer connective tissue proper this is difficult to see, but it looks like it's mostly a dense regular, but maybe some dense irregular fiber CT. This, I want you to look at this, that area right there. Actually, let me circle it so that I don't obscure it. This whole area, actually all of this, what I notice are lots of purple dots, and I can't see fibers really well. When you have a tissue like this, so you're looking at a mucosa, so this is a mucosa or mucous membrane. When you have an area like this, where you see lots of purple dots, which are, in this case, lymphocytes, not a lot of fibers, this will always be reticular connective tissue proper, okay? Now right here, I've got various glands in the submucosa. I can see right here a lumen. It's too far away to really see the epithelial structure very well, but um, I happen to know that this is all simple cuboidal because I've looked at it at higher magnification. Okay, now right here, I've got these little cells. Okay, this is adipose tissue. Okay, um, now let's get to these. Here is a chondrocyte. Here is the lacuna. Okay. And then I've got all of these short, sharp black lines in between the lacuni. So my fish eyes tell me it's cartilage. The fact that I have all these black lines in the ground substance and it's not smooth and glassy tells me that it is elastic cartilage. Okay, all right, let's look at the next slide. All right, now we are looking at fibrocartilage. And remember, I need you to get that word in the function. Resists extreme tension and extreme compression. Okay, three major areas where we find it. 
holding the two sides of the vertebrae, so it's on the edges of the intervertebral disc, because it's not actually the disc, and it's not actually the articular cartilage, it is around the edges of it, okay? The same thing with the pubic symphysis, and then it forms the entire knee meniscus, okay? So when I look at this picture, I see the chondrocyte right here, and I see a lacuna, let me change the color, a lacuna right here. Here's some more chondrocytes in lacunae, okay? Now, when I look at the grand substance, I see this hazy, pooled cotton or cotton candy-like effect. So the, 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 this is definitely not smooth and glassy, not smooth and glassy ground substance. But I don't see short, sharp lines. I see long, pooled lines all going in one basic direction. That is collagen, therefore this is fibrocartilage. And it takes its name, fibro, from the fact that there are so many fibers that are visible. All right, one more slide. All right, we're gonna talk more about bone, blood, and lymph later. We'll get to bone pretty soon. Blood and lymph, we're really gonna talk about that in AMP2. What I want you to remember for now, the ground substance for bone, is a mineral, okay? For blood and lymph, the ground substance is a plasma liquid with dissolved fibers, okay? Um, so because the fibers are dissolved, you can't see them but there are fibers present, so therefore it is a connective tissue, okay? All right, that is it for this section, and I will stop there, and you can take a break and then move on to your next lecture.